Well, hello, hello. It says we're live. There's a little red thing here that says we're live. So let's make us look good since we're live. There you go. That camera will have to do for today. So welcome to the um, Bosses Lunch Hour. This is the Bosses Only Lunch Hour. I put this together as a, a time where I could go live and hook up with any of the, the people that I work with, partners, students, anybody who wants to get on and go through some of this information. Um, I actually do this program myself now every year and I wanted to share it with people and it's a really great um, program. So this, this actually I talked about it the other day, it really kind of helped me to change things around completely in my life and I'm really thrilled that I found this program. So I'm going to dig right into it real quick. Um, everything that I'm talking about today, this is a, this is a writing program. This is a, a chance for you to get this information and learn how to write it down and make yourself i'm going to just work on this right here there we go so this is a chance for you to get your your story about what's going on now what's going on in the future you're writing about your business so there's a lot of prompts that i'm going to give you i'm going to talk a lot about psychology and and like the different strategies we use in business and then there's going to be a writing portion so this is interactive this is for you to, it's not for you to write to like show anybody else. It's for you to write, for you to have the input for your business and for your future and for your life. So um, welcome, welcome to class number one. This is actually class number one. It's the series called Quantum Leap. Uh, today we're gonna dive into something pretty cool. This is the emotional roller coaster that is entrepreneurship. And the big thing we're gonna go into is the role that you play in driving the change in your business. So today, everything that, uh, like I said, is writing exercises. So writing is by far the best thing you can do for your mind and for your intelligence and for your life and your happiness, because it helps you to understand what's really happening in your life. Now that might sound like a weird thing. You're like, of course I know what's going on in, in my life, but I mean, do you really? Because when you think about it, your memory is faulty. All of us, our memories are faulty. Whenever we don't crystallize it and put it down in words and have it written, then those are like abstract ideas. So I'm going to go into a little bit of like the deep, you know, philosophical part of this, but it's important. Um, so like ask yourself, do you know everything that there is to know in the entire universe? No, we don't know everything. We don't even know the names of all the people on earth and all of their names of all the people who've ever lived and all the books that they've ever read and all the information they ever learned. We don't know all of that. What we have is this little tiny amount of time that we live on this earth and this little tiny amount of information and the small amount of window of our attention that we have. And from that small amount of information that we have, we put together and we concoct this thing that we call my way. You know what I'm talking about, right? My way. I want to have it my way like Burger King. I want things to go my way. I want to remember things my way. Don't we argue all the time over the facts of what happened in the past? You said this. Well, no, I didn't say that. Well, you did say that. Well, I didn't mean it. That's arguing about the past. We have different memories about what happened in the past. So whenever we're trying to concoct like our way, a lot of times we think it's bad when we can't even agree with other people about the past, but it's, it's even worse when we don't agree with ourselves about the past. You ever thought about something that way? You ever thought about something very strongly and then you got more information and then all of a sudden you thought differently about it? What happened there? You got different information and a different viewpoint. And so my point is your, your memory is faulty. All of ours is. So when you write down things, you can make them matter. And what I mean is that's very literal. And once again, this is some kind of philosophical stuff, but literally and scientifically, you can change a thought, which is like this ethereal abstract idea. And it's kind of like the wind. Like, you know, the wind is there, but you can't touch it, right? So in other words, it's not matter. It's not in the real world. It's not like scientific matter in the real world. So you can say, if it's not written down, it's not matter. If it's not written down, it does not matter. Funny how that works. So your thoughts are not material, 
but you can make it and you can change it into matter by writing it. So that's how important writing things out is. And I like to use the words uh, writing things out instead of writing it down because you're getting them out of your mind and out into the world so it becomes a real piece of tangible, holdable matter in the world. So you want to make it matter? Make it matter. <clears throat> so the, uh, let's talk about at first the emotional phases of business. So part of the writing prompt that we're going to get to at the end of this uh, class today, at the end of this video, is writing um, about where you are in your journey. Okay, so these are the five emotional phases of a business. And before I go into this, I want to spend just a second to thank uh, Peter Shillard, who came up with this program. And I actually did this a couple of years ago, and I've been doing it with friends and other colleagues for, for, for a while to kind of help people get a, a good view of the future. And so this is the first time that I've put it down on video and reached it out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope everyone who's watching and who watches this later on really takes the time and does this. I'm telling you, it changed my life. It changed my business, it changed my family. And so I really encourage you to take the time and put the emotional effort in to do this. So since we're talking about emotions, let's talk about the emotional phases of a business. So the very first phase, we're all familiar with this one, we've all been through it, is where you're, you have uninformed optimism. You're excited, it's the beginning. And so when you first start, everything is super exciting. You're all pumped up and you're ready to jump on your new idea. So you've got these big dreams. You've got, in fact, they're huge, you know, because in the very beginning, you're like, wow, how big could I make it? Everything looks perfect. And if you're anything like me, you're, you're what I call a spreadsheet millionaire, which means you've already worked it all out. You have 10 years of projections on the spreadsheet. And of course, nothing ever goes wrong in the spreadsheet. There's never COVID on the spreadsheet or the you know 2008 meltdown on the spreadsheet. That's not there. But you know everything always looks perfect in your head at the beginning. This is the time when you're not seeing the bumps ahead. At this point, you're not looking out and you're not thinking about the tough stuff that's coming down the road. You're, you're mainly seeing the good side because that's how you have to be whenever you're starting. That's important to be that way to have that, that, because it, Unless you see it working, even when it's not, you won't make it work. So it's kind of good to not be seeing the bumps, but it's important to know where you are and to realize, hey, I'm at the beginning now. I'm in the uninformed optimism. I'm not seeing the bumps. So that's important to remember. That's why it's, it's good to know where you are. So you feel super confident in the beginning because you feel like you can do anything. Your confidence is just through the roof and you believe in your idea. It's the beginning one and everybody else is excited for you too. But here's something I want you to remember. They only want you to succeed just a little bit less than them. And that doesn't make people bad people. It doesn't make your friends or family evil. It's just human. That's how we are. We all would like for you to succeed. We hope that you do really well, but just like this much less than me. So anyway, just keep that in your mind in the future. Um, remember that when you're in this first phase, that a lot of the people that are all excited for you, you know, that's, that's what's really in their mind. You're probably raring to go and you just want to get going right now. So you probably are not just like planning and waiting around. If you're one of these serial entrepreneurs who's probably the kind of people that are watching this, probably going to be, you're ready to go, go, go. That's, that's pretty common. So let's get to phase two. Phase two, now you started at the top. Phase one is um, uninformed optimism. Like you don't know, but you're just really, you know, thrilled about the future. So now in phase two, you hit what's called informed pessimism. So this is when real problems start to show up. You're starting to hit some of these problems, things that you didn't see are coming up and it's getting kind of tough. And now you're starting to doubt a little bit. And this is where you start to wonder, can I really do this? I mean, you see how hard it is now and it can be a little bit scary. So you're now starting to realize that this is going to be tough and you're understanding that this is not just a walk in the park. It's definitely harder than you thought. And like I said, that can be pretty scary. So this changes to, you know, whenever you realize it's getting tough, you start to have this change in your mentality and it stops being, um, wow, I only have to make this many sales calls and then I'll, I'll pay all the bills. And then 
later on as you're getting into informed pessimism, you're like, I have to make how many sales before I can pay everybody? Like everybody wants to get paid. Like the rent needs to be paid, all the employees. So that's one of the things you, you really gotta um, pay attention to that, that it, cause it changes. And you, that'll, that'll let you know where you are. Whenever you're like, oh, I only have to make this many sales calls and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. And then whenever you start to get realistic, you're like, okay, this is what the KPIs are. I need to hit this or else we're not keeping the lights on. So this is when you start to get more like worried about decisions because you're thinking about the choices that you've already made and you're looking at all these bigger choices now that you've got to keep making and you wanna stay on the right path and this is the time when you're probably gonna start questioning your path. So that's another key for you. If you start to say, hey man, you're really questioning your path. Maybe I'm in this informed pessimism phase and I need to realize that so that I can stay on track, okay? You're starting to really feel the stress and uh, probably a little bit overwhelmed. It's a lot to handle, it's a lot to, to deal with. So that's, uh, that's two. And if you thought that was bad, you're going into phase three now. If phase three, we call it the valley of despair. And so this is when things get really tough. It's, uh, you might be facing the biggest challenges you've had yet, and you might be thinking about quitting. And you might just think about giving up, and it feels like maybe this is too much to handle, because you're in the valley. You've really, you've really gotten down to a low point, and it feels tough. And so, honestly, this is when most people quit and go back to one. You go back to phase one. We'll talk about that in a second. Because a lot of times the reason they do that because you're feeling down, you, you're having a hard time getting excited about the project. Like you were really excited at the start. Nobody could get you to shut up about it. Now you don't even want to talk about it at all. It's feeling down and you're like, will this ever even get any better? And the thing is, as an entrepreneur, you're probably going to go through this quite a few times. And especially if you get to this part and start over. So remember that. You can do this many times, but you want to get to the end and you'll see why the end. Um, during this time in the Valley of Despair, you're going to need to learn a lot. This is the hardest time to do it, but it's the most important time to do it. You're going to have to learn from these tough times, and you're going to have to learn how to keep going and how to move, how to pivot, how to, how to really service your customer. Whatever it is that you're having a challenge with, you're going to have to figure out a way around it. And this is where the growth happens. This is, the, this is that last set at the gym. This is that last mile that you did extra. It's where you really grow. It's not the fun part. This is where you get stronger, and it's where you learn what you're really made of. So, um, as you're going through the Valley of Despair, it's a tough spot. It gets really tra it's draining, and honestly, it'll feel pretty lousy. Um, as rough it is, as it is, like I said, this is where the real growth happens. And the thing is, like I said, as an entrepreneur going through it many times, I've just come through one of those times. One of my businesses was real low, the other one was high. And so here's, here's kind of a tangent, but as an entrepreneur, if you have multiple businesses, if one of them is in the valley, one might be hitting success and you're like, great, they kind of like equal out. But then you just wind up with this nice, calm equal. And that's actually, that's actually where you want to be. It's a little bit zen, but that's, uh, that's where you want to be. So as you're thinking about your own journey, think about this. If you're at the, at the valley, are you trying to go back? Because a lot of people, why do people go back? Um, a lot of people hit this phase and they just think it's too hard and they remember back and they're like, oh man, it was so much fun in the beginning and it was exciting at the start and that's been that uninformed optimism. That's why it was so much fun because you didn't know how hard it was gonna be in the future. So you wanna go back to that and you might just abandon your current project and jump into something brand new because what you're doing is you're chasing that initial high again. You know, they call that shiny penny syndrome. What it really is, is being scared of what you are and trying to get back to that good feeling. It's a cycle. We go through it over and over, it's a cycle. So get to the hard part, you start something new, you hit the tough part, and then you bail and you start all over again. If that's where you've been, if that's what you've been doing, this is the most important part for you is to push through this part. The key is to recognize that even though you, you if you think you're gonna just start over, it might feel good in the short term, it's only gonna avoid the real work for a short amount of time because it's gonna push your challenges back. Uh, the growth and learning that you get from sticking out through the valley of despair, you cannot get that in that early stage that you wanna go back to, the easy stage that you wanna go back to, the fun stage. You can't get the growth there. That's not where the growth happens. So as you're thinking back on your journey, think about 
Are you tempted to go back and start over because it's more fun and less scary? Or if you're at this point, are you ready to push through and learn and grow and see what you can really be made of? Because remember, this is where the real magic happens, when you stick with it, even when it's hard. It's also where you learn that uh, what got you here won't get you there. So here's an important part. If you've used like grit and determination and willpower and, and discipline to get from, for example, from zero to one, to get from where you started to where you are now, most likely the skills that you're going to need to get from where you are to where you want to go are going to be different than what got you from where you started to where you are now. And so that's an important thing to remember, especially if you're in the valley. Probably it's going to be new skills to get you up out of the valley. A lot of times you're in the valley because you haven't set up procedures and flow charts and all the boring stuff about a business. Because at first you're just kind of throwing things up against the wall and seeing what sticks and let's figure it out, man, let's go. That's very common with entrepreneurs. And even if you have a big business plan, even if you have it detailed out with bullet points and outlines and pictures and graphs and all that kind of stuff, things happen and you have to, you have to be able to move with it. You have to be able to improvise. So the next phase that we get to, phase four, that's informed optimism. So after you've been through the really tough part, we call that the valley of despair. This is where you're starting to come out and some of your systems are starting to take shape. While you're in the valley, probably what's going to happen, all that learning, building, trying to do, trying to get it together, because you're at the bottom, you're like, i got to figure this out. And that's where a lot of motivation comes from. There's a lot of uh, that pain behind you that you're running away from that inspires you to get the solutions. And a lot of those solutions are either systems, uh, the boring stuff, like I said, the flow charts. That's when, this is when the informed optimism part is whenever those start to take hold because you're optimistic, but you have like KPIs you're looking at that are making you optimistic. Whenever you were uninformed optimistic, you just had these great dreams and yeah, this spreadsheet of my projections. But now we have phase four, which is informed optimism. So we actually have data, we have knowledge, we have KPIs that we've hit. So now we really are hitting our systems and that's what's gonna carry you up out of the valley and through informed optimism is whenever you have systems in place. These are websites, these are uh, all the infrastructure that runs your business. Because in the beginning you, you, you might have like a website but it's not connected right to Amazon so you, or however, whatever your business is. It might not be connected right to where your product is getting to the customer through the sales and as you set up all those systems, you become more efficient and that's where you start to make the money. So you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel now in this informed optimism portion. It's when things start to look up and you've been through a lot of these challenges, but you're, you're getting a handle on what works for your business and you're getting a handle on what does not. So these systems that you put into place to get out of the valley to start with, this is when they start to pay off. It's like you're climbing a big hill. It's tough, but the closer you get to the top, the further you can see. Because now you've made mistakes and you face setbacks, but you've learned a lot from them. And so that's why you start to feel optimistic again. But this time it's different. Your optimism, like I said, is based on real experiences, real KPIs, what you've really done, and the information you've picked up along the way. So now you're making smarter choices, so of course you're more confident. Of course you're, you're seeing the optimism. You're thinking more about how you do things because you've learned what works best. So this is about using everything that you've learned to keep moving forward in a better way. Let me come over here and check real quick and see if there's any uh, comments. Nobody's put any comments up yet. All right, so let me go back to the class. So like I said, you're climbing this big hill and the closer you get to the top, the farther you can see. That's one of the reasons that you're gaining an optimism through this whole period. So once again, if you want to figure out what phase you're in so that you can kind of relate to yourself and relate to your business better, this is one of the key things. If you're gaining optimism, you're probably in this informed optimism because you have the information now. Okay. It's also where you're going to get your energy back. A lot of times when you're in that, in that valley of despair, it'll just zap your energy. And so now you can get committed again. 
because you've been through these hard times and you're feeling more confident and you're going to handle these challenges and reach your goals. So now you're not just wishing for success anymore. You're actively working towards it and you're hitting KPIs and you're putting in your systems. So the knowledge and experience that you've gained is the value that you get to keep from it. So this last, this phase, this informed optimism, <clears throat> this is a really important turning point. It's when you start using all the tough lessons and you make real progress. And this is the part that sets you up to come for the next level, which is your success. So phase five, the emotional phase five of a business, we call it success and fulfillment. So now you're starting to see your hard work pay off. And even if you're at this point in your business, if you're doing, once you do this writing exercise and you realize I'm at success and fulfillment, things are going great. I've already got it all dialed in. Excellent. Now you know where you are and you know that you're probably about to hit number one again. You probably hit that success part and you're probably about to hit number one again and go through the whole same thing again, which is the way it goes. Um, now you're going to start to feel proud of yourself. And this is that really awesome feeling. You all know it. You've done something you're proud of before. And whenever you have it as a business and you're really succeeding, you're helping other people, uh, you look back at what you've been through and you think, wow, I actually did that. And, but I want to warn you again about something that uh, whenever you hit these big, huge goals, a lot of times if you're denying yourself any pleasure along the way, if you're denying yourself those little, those little uh, wins along the way, you got to have those small wins along the way as you're building to the big win or else you can wind up with something that's really common. It's called dopamine prediction reward error. That's a long word. It's a long phrase. What it means is that you think that you're going to have this huge flood of dopamine. You're going to be so happy. It's going to be amazing. And a lot of times life doesn't work out that way where it's all at once like that. And even if it does, your body can't even register all that dopamine at the same time. It's a chemical reaction. So your body just kind of hits max dopamine and it doesn't matter how much is getting thrown on it. So you think you're going to have this awesome, awesome feeling, but you get there and it's really kind of, it's like it's maxed out. So the way to avoid that to where you don't have like a, a negative experience from having a success is along the way you hit the little rewards along the way. The little benchmarks, the little KPIs, the little goals that you set for yourself along the way. So that's kind of a, a ninja trick for you. That's some, some deep end. If you've been through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And like I said, you're ready for more. If you're in this phase, you're probably ready for more. So start paying attention to, am I overly uninformed optimistic? Because you know you're going to start another business. You know you're going to be going in uninformed optimistic. That's the way we start businesses. And so if you know that about yourself already, you know that you're going to be going into that, you can pay attention and say, am I way too optimistic for how uninformed I am? And maybe you can balance it out a little bit. That's one of the things you can do to, to work on it. Try to be more informed so that you're not so uninformed and optimistic about it. So there you go. That's the uh, five emotional levels of a business. And if you've been through and you've weathered the storm now, you've learned a ton and you're reaping the rewards. So this phase is all about enjoying that success. Now let's go on and we're going to talk about really taking charge and making changes in your business because we're about to talk about a writing prompt and you're going to write some stuff out, but then are you really going to make the changes? So we're going to set it up to where you really do make the changes. The first way we're going to do that is you really need to know what you want. You know, they always say start with the goal, start with the end in mind. And that seems kind of trite and a lot of these little hooks like that are, you know, they sound that way, but they're, they're used a lot because they're effective. They get the point across. You got to know what you want. First things first, know where you're headed. It's a big deal. Because I guarantee you, if you don't know where you're going, I guarantee you're going to get there. need to know where you're going. Once you know where you're going, it's time to get moving. So just like writing this down and dreaming about this stuff, that's not going to make it happen. What you need to do is get up and do the things that you write down in your plan. Achieve the goals. Take the steps and you'll get there. So even the little steps count. One of the things I say all the time is even a small step forward is still a step forward. So the big goal is to just keep moving forward. Even if it's the smallest steps, that's still forward. 
Another thing to do is keep your eyes open. Uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. Listen to what your customers and other people are saying about your business. So as you're building, as you're starting and growing, listen. You gotta be like a radar, always be on the lookout for the useful informa information. And then you take that information and you have to be ready to switch things up if you need to. So if something's not working in your business, do not be afraid to just change how you're doing it. A lot of people get loyal to these systems that aren't working anymore. And that's like a huge component of my entire business. I'll tell you this one little key component. If something's not working, get rid of it or else I'll come and buy your business later on. Because that's exactly what we look for. We look for people who have a business that they have a system that's not really working anymore. It hasn't grown. This is, for example, I work in RV parks. What's really popular for RV parks is if you have online booking. Well, there are a ton, a ton, a ton of operators out there that don't use online booking. They're afraid to change how they do things. And so since something's not working, they just don't change it. So somebody like me can come in and buy that business and just update it, change the things that aren't working and make quite a bit of money. So just remember that if you got things in your business that are not working, all you're doing is just making it cheaper for somebody else to buy your business from you. Okay. The next thing is, um, as you're starting out your business, I want you to think about aiming to be awesome. Once again, it sounds trite, but always try to do your best, even in the small parts of your business, because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So keep learning and getting better, whether it has to do with how nice does your Zoom look, or um, you know, being well-groomed on, uh, even though you're working at home. There's tons of things you can do to be awesome and just be that little bit better than you're doing right now. It's all about trying to be excellent in everything you do. So your business, you don't wanna have any weak links because it'll drag down the entire business. You don't want a, a weak part of your business that you just don't pay attention to. So here's your assignment. Now we're gonna actually get to what is the writing portion of this, what are you gonna write? You're gonna write your own story. You're gonna mix in the ups and the downs everything that you faced and how you think and feel about your business. So this is the story of you and your business. Here's the things you should cover. Where are you right now? So we talked about the five emotional phases. Think about where you are. Think about where you are. Are you, are you just beginning? Are you in the valley? Where are you? Um, if you're starting to see the changes, and make decisions in your business, I mean, that's really great. You're starting to see that growing out of the valley. So understand yourself and your business. That you're gonna be writing about, like I said, you and your business, but who are you? What is your identity? So what is your role in your business? And this is beyond your job title. Like maybe you're always the one who comes up with new ideas or solves tough problems. This is about who you are on your team, not just your job title. So for me, for example, I'm the chief investment officer of Paradise Park Ventures. And so I'm a chief investment officer, that's my title. But if you described my job, you'd say I'm the deal getter. I'm the one who goes and gets the deal. And so that's the kind of way, think of your identity in your business. What is your role in your business? What do you call it? So let's talk about your capabilities. I want you to write about what are you really good at? Think about those few skills that you use in your business um, that you're really, really great at. It's probably about 20%. It's about 20% of your skills. Like you might have a ton of skills that you have to use throughout your, your day, and it might be just the smallest little thing that you're really amazing at. And what's amazing is like, say you're a photographer. Your amazing 20% might not be your photography. It might be the way that you uh, talk to the customers. And so if you really focus on that one part, you can really grow your business. That's the way to do it. Focus on that 20% um, of what you're capable of and what you're really, really good at. So talk about your beliefs. What do you believe about your business? Do you believe this is going to be a big business? Do you believe it's going to be a big hit? Because your beliefs are like your business's cheerleader. Your beliefs are out there believing that it can happen. And here's another thing. I say in belief, I say believing is be living. Because you believe it, you'll actually live it. You'll be living what you believe. I think there's a quote that says, we question all of our beliefs except for the ones we never think to question. We question everything. 
And the things that we don't even think to question, that's what we really don't question. So look at your values. What is super important to you and to your business? You can look at things like uh, being honest or making the best products. What's important to your business? These are your values and your business's values. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways to, there's like values, there's core values, there's a, like a motto for your business or a mission statement for your business. Um, these are, let's stick with values. What do you value and what do you want your business to value? So behaviors, how do you act in your business? Like, are you always on time? Are you rude to your team? Do you boss people around? Do you pay your bills late? Do you answer emails after a week or after one hour? How do you behave and act in your business? And write that down. Write what you're proud about and write what you're not proud about. Because that list of what you're not proud about, this is not for anybody else. You don't have to be ashamed of it. You're writing down what you're not proud of so you can look at it later and check it off and say, I don't do that anymore. I don't do that anymore. You wanna talk about a nice thing to check off your list, you start to look at some crappy behavior that you have and if you're real honest with yourself, you're like, man, that's, that's rude or unpleasant or whatever it is. There's probably something. And so fix that, you can fix a lot. Um, environment. Where do you want your business stuff to be? It's not just about like your office. Like how do you want your business to be? How do you want your environment to be? Are you a mechanic and you like it, you know, with papers everywhere and there's, there's grease everywhere because you like to be in the cars and stuff? Uh, is that the kind of style of business that you want or is the environment like super clean and in an office with a window or is it like in a, in a darker office to where there's no distractions and there's just blank walls everywhere so you can focus? What is that environment that your business can thrive in and that's you thrive in and your business thrive in? So like who are your competitors and who are you selling to? Those are some of the things to think about whenever you're writing this. All right. Now this is the actual instructions take your time with this this is not once again it's not for anybody else there's no rush even if you were to do this a year from now if you were to do it later if you do one module and then you take another class a, a month or a week later doesn't matter this is for you take your time with it this is about getting to know yourself it's about getting to know your business journey this is not just like a regular assignment to throw off this is a way to figure out what's driving you and how you can keep moving forward. So don't worry about writing right or wrong answers. This is all about your own unique story. So I'll tell you a little bit about what I wrote. And I was, uh, I'll just be real vulnerable and just read exactly what I wrote without explaining it, which is really tough because I read it earlier and I was like, oh, I want to explain this part. Oh, I wonder why I was thinking that. It doesn't matter. This is not meant for anybody else to read. And whenever I read it, I understood it. And it's really important to look back on this later. And there's plenty of stuff we're gonna write that's gonna be very helpful for you throughout the entire year. So this is some of what I wrote. I was talking about identity. I said, I totally changed my identity this year. I see myself differently and so does everyone else. I left behind the fake it till you make it and I'm gonna be running my rentals from the beach. I work in my underwear identity. I embrace everything that is the opposite of that. Get up early, work hard. No, I mean harder, skip the beach. And I saw myself before as a long haired, super cool, like entrepreneur guy who's gonna be rich from finding some secret key to entrepreneurship. And looking back, I can see that I was searching for the lotto ticket. I was looking for that lotto ticket business to take me from zero to hero with no stops along the way. And so I didn't even realize that I needed to shift anything before that happened. I didn't have an aha moment where I said, I have to get up early and work hard all day, every day. I just sort of started doing it without a plan. And that just kind of worked for me. My identity is now I'm a morally upright hard worker who deserves the results and is a proper steward of the rewards that come from hard work. And so whenever I wrote that, it connected so deeply to me because I was like, that's my identity. And so that's who I was throughout the entire year. And that's who everyone responded to throughout the entire year. And that's why there was so much good response 
and good introductions, referrals. It's been amazing. So that's your assignment. You have your writing assignment. Use these psychological layers um, and really be honest with yourself. This is not for anyone else. Be honest at least with yourself. Otherwise, how are you going to know where you are and how are you going to know where you're going? I'll pop back over onto the Facebook real quick. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Appreciate you coming to see the class. If you uh, are first time getting to know me, my name is Alex Alexander, and um, I don't usually host classes like this. I usually work on, uh, I'm an investor, and so I invest in RV parks. And if you'd like to find out more information about that, look on all of my social media. You're watching this on Facebook. You'll see bossmethod.net. That's how to get in touch with me and get some either mentoring, some coaching, some consulting, and we'll see if we can't get you going. That'll do it for the boss's lunch hour today. I know I haven't been going an entire hour. Apologize for that. It's been about a half an hour, but uh, I guess I'm just talking too fast. We'll see if we can stretch it out a little bit next, uh, next class. But look forward to coming to the next class. I'm doing this every day at noon, every weekday at noon, the boss's lunch hour, and I'm teaching this entire course. I'm going to be going through this entire writing course, and this is meant for you to write out, for example, today, where you are in your business. You'd be surprised by the end of this process how much change you're going to go through in one year because of this process. Glad to have you all on board. Go check us out at bossmethod.net. If you want to get into our masterminds, you can find out about it there. All right. See y'all tomorrow. Love you guys.